Hi, this is Trey with Straight Ahead Samples. This is going to be a quick video overview of the imminent trombone. We're just going to play a few things, show the basic controls, and talk about some of the new features we've added uh, since our last library, Tenor Colossus. So if you look at the interface here, you can see it's basically the same as uh, Tenor Colossus and Birth of the Trumpet. Um, we have um, performance view, we've got our smart delay, real time, which I'll go into more depth later. We've got our articulation display, a few controls here like mod wheel dynamics versus key velocity. Um, so I'm in real time now. So, and we have the, the mutes again. So back to a brass instrument. So we've got some mutes, just like the trumpet. So we're on mod wheel. So that's pretty cool. Um, we've got a sound panel here with the mixer with some different mics. Uh, this bleed uh, fader is our is a custom convolution we made. It's supposed to emulate a microphone on some other instrument in the room, and it really adds a lot of. I mean, a lot of bite. We find that it really helps add a little bit of edge in a track. Um, so, so you got a reverb, some pan, basic stuff. Um, on the control panel, we've got a little more in-depth controls, some things you can tweak and change, play with the settings. We got vibrato controls like speed and amount. We've got a real-time weight, which is just how long the vibrato weights. Right, so it waited quite a bit, but we can. So that's for real time. And then in smart delay, we've got this terminal vibrato fader, which controls where from the end of the note, the, the vibrato will start. So that go into more detail in another video, but that's the basics of that. Um, some things like swing accent, which is how hard it's uh, hitting the higher notes and ghosting the lower notes. Um, that's really important to the sound. Um, some things here like mute key switches, you can turn those on and off, um, things like that. We also have this long scoop speed, which is a <clears throat> thing I'll show in a minute, but that was a feature, a new feature we've added uh, on the Tenor Colossus. People were having trouble playing where they would trigger the long scoop and it would take too long to get there, uh, to get to the note. And so it was proving difficult. So we added a speed knob so you can just speed up or slow down those scoops. And we're going to add that to Tenor Colossus very shortly, but I'll show you how that works. Um, so yeah, so articulation wise, if we're just in real time here, um, I'll just kind of go over the basics. We've got legato, staccato, staccatissimo. Um, tongued, which isn't any different in real time. I'll show it to you in smart delay, forte pianos, all right, with a little accent, shakes, classic, falls, long falls, slightly ridiculous. Um, we've got scoops, which uh, scoops act a lot of different ways depending on wh where you are, real time, smart delay. So, um, but that's basically a scoop. We have doits. Um, we've got flops, which are just like rips, glisses. When glisses are kind of another one that has a lot of different functions. Um, uh, you know, the most basic, obviously, is um, right, a gliss up to... In real time, there's a lot of different things that might happen. Um, it also plays a run in, so if you play a, a key switch before you play now, right? Similar to a scoop, 
but longer, right? And then half step bends. And it's little things like these staccatos, if you're on a staccato and you play a half step bend, it'll go to a, right? So, um, so that's the real time stuff. And obviously we're on mod wheels. So. So mod wheels respond. Um, so so for the smart delay, in case uh, you haven't seen uh, the tenor colossus or birth of the trumpet, basically uh, the idea is you play a phrase in in real time, you turn smart delay on, and you move your MIDI region back four beats, and as as it plays, it gives the instrument time to figure out what you're playing. It looks at the phrase, it looks at all the intervals and note lengths and all kinds of things and it sort of figures out the best samples to get and it goes and grabs all these different recordings from um, over 2,000 samples a note per note per pitch um, and goes and pulls from this giant matrix of, of, of recordings and uh, we recorded legato in and out of each note so imagine legato transitions on either side of the note on both sides so, um, and different note lengths, we recorded nine note lengths. We also recorded different, uh, different recordings for the beginning of a phrase, the middle of a phrase, and the end of a phrase. So you kind of multiply all those things um, by all those different articulations. And so it's kind of pulling from, I mean, imagine having an instrument with 2,000 key switches is basically kind of what's happening. So um, so I'm just going to play a phrase in and we can kind of pull some articulation down and can kind of explain how smart delay works and you can see it in action. Um, so let me just... Okay, so I'll just play something. So super simple. Um, I'm gonna quantize this because just for all of us. So I turn the smart delay on. If you have this, you can sometimes it gives you a reminder to remind you to pull your MIDI back. Um, for us, I'll do it just for fun. But there's no other there's no other tracks to sync it with, so it doesn't really matter. But if you had drums and bass and other instruments in here, you would obviously need to uh, drag it back four beats. So. So if we just play it, let's just play it with no changes at all and just kind of see how it sounds. Okay, so a lot better. So little things that, so you can see when there's gaps, it plays, um, so instead of having to instead of having to trigger like a staccato at the end of the phrase, it's just playing a different sample. It's going and finding a staccato. It's actually finding a note that came from a, a step above to a, to a short note. So if you like listen to just this part. Right, so it's, this isn't just a long, this isn't just a long sample shortened. It's actually a different recording. So you don't need to, no key switches at all, right? So that's just, that's just how it'll play. Um, so sometimes if there's gaps, I'll drag it if I want it legato. So one more time without, without the gaps. So there was another one, so I missed that. One more again. Great. So, I mean, that in and of itself is, is pretty remarkable. So all those different samples, uh, all the little nuances in pitch and timbre that happen when um, when players are going from note to note, you're hearing. So that's legato. So that's kind of the most uh, slurred. Everything is as slurred as possible. So the next thing I might show is just like staccato. So we can just kind of listen to what staccato might sound like. <laughs> Mm-hmm. 
right? So obvious. So st staccatissimo. Right, so that's also, that did a little weird thing because that note was super long. Um, so the thing about st st staccato and staccatissimo is you're going to get more round robins here than when I mentioned when you're on legato and you play the last note of a phrase. It'll play a staccato, but you're not going to have as many round robins. So if you're playing a bunch of short notes in a row, I would switch over to the staccatissimo or staccato articulation, even though if you just played a string of disconnected notes, it would play them all staccato. Um, tongued is, is a really cool articulation, especially for trombone, but really for anything. Um, you know, we're so concerned with legato so much of the time um, in sample library world that we forget that a lot of times people don't play legato. And trombone, especially because of the nature of the slide, a lot of times the players will, uh, will tongue each note and kind of cheat out of the end of the note. So make the note slightly short to hide the slide movement. And so if you hear, I'll play this uh, with the tongued articulation. So every note is just a little short and you're getting a tongue articulation at the beginning of every note, um, but still long. So I think you'll, you'll hear that it's, it's definitely a sound. Right, so that, I mean, that's a very clean, kind of way a trombone player would play that if they were trying to play it really nice and perfectly, as opposed to the legato, where you're hearing a little more of the slide, you're hearing a little more of those pitch alterations. But so a tongued articulation is very, very useful. And um, it gives it just a little bit more of a tack. So it's a little less soft, and you're going to get a little more punch on each note. Um, so those are the, the main ones. Um, and as far as like the, the basic... I think of them as main articulations. You got legato, tongued, and the two short ones. So um, next, um, let's talk about forte piano. So another very, um, so this is this E key switch here. You can see them popping up here. Um, this is a very useful articulation, especially in pop and jazz. Anytime there's a leap up, especially to a long notes or a leap down, uh, you're going to want to put a little forte piano. And these aren't really super forte piano. They're more like marcato, like accents, where the note is long. It's not going all the way down to piano, really, but it's giving it a nice, strong punch. So this phrase, let's hear it without. Let me just, um, let's just play the second phrase, and you'll hear it with, with no forte piano. So that's fine. You can hear that that top note, that top note is a little flat sounding because when you leap to it you're going to want to give it just a little accent so here it is with an accent on that top note right so that stinks so really don't be afraid of this articulation on especially on long notes it's going to make a big difference um you know it sounds good without it um but uh, that will add just another layer um, so then we have, let's see, shakes. We could just change this to a shake and it will give us another kind of thing. Right. So, <laughs> so that's a very, uh, common thing we hear. Um, so falls, uh, so there's a bunch, uh, a bunch of different ways the falls work. So the most obvious one would be like right here. So let's put that forte piano back in just because it does sound so good so this end of a little phrase here you might play just a little fall so let's just give that a listen right i'm gonna mute these for a second um just so they don't keep playing over me talking right obvious kind of makes sense um another another thing about uh the way we recorded we recorded falls at the end of the phrase obviously but we also recorded falls in the middle of a phrase so um places you might not think to put a fall um like for instance maybe here when i'm de descending or even just in the middle of like a legato phrase sometimes just trying a little fall especially for trombone because they're sliding around so much it sometimes is a really nice a nice thing. So check out with a fall here on this middle note. Right? So 
So it just yeah. gives it a little, yeah. you know, it's, it makes it a little maybe sloppier, but it gives a little realism. So try putting falls on the middle of a note, you know. That's a that's a really cool thing. Um, and then obviously the long fall would be like at the end of a phrase. So we can hear it at the end of the tune or something. Oh, I'll put it on the wrong note. This note. Here we go. Okay, so um, then then we would deal with scoops. Um, so there's a lot of different things that happen with scoops. So we have the sort of basic scoop. I might put, let's see, you could put one at the very top. So maybe there. You could also put one here. But Instead of a fall there, you could try a scoop. Let's just hear what that sounds like from the first two phrases. I'm gonna mute these two just for. Right? So that's a, that's a nice sound. The first little note has a little something into it and the last note, scoops. So that that's sort of like a short scoop. If you have a shorter note, it's gonna trigger those. Um, the other thing, which, uh, I mentioned before, which is this long scoop. So let's say we put one, instead of a forte piano, we're going to put a scoop here. And with tenor colossus, people were running into that the scoop would take too long. So I'm going to turn this hard velocity equals long scoop. I'm going to goose up this velocity here. So now it's going to trigger a long scoop. Let's just hear what that sounds like. Right. So you can hear there, it's almost getting to the note, but not quite. So if we come over here to the control page, and obviously this is going to depend on the tempo you're playing in and, you know, the vibe of it and how, how quickly you want it to go. So let's just turn this kind of way far up and see if we can get it a little more closer to the way we want it. Right. So it fully got to that F there. Um, and you could tweak it and right so that's going to give you a lot more control over those long scoops um so that's a new feature and we will add that to the tenor colossus in the coming weeks hopefully very soon so that's scoops and long scoops um i'm going to put this back on for to piano because i think that's the way i like it um <clears throat> and maybe that fall actually i like the scoop um so then last would be, I mean, we have the, the rips and the, and the doits and all that, but I think of the main ones here, maybe let's look at putting a gliss in because these are kind of interesting on the trombone. Obviously, it's an important... What if we just fall? So we'll get rid of this and let's just... Instead of... So we'll make a long note and we'll put a gliss there. Let's listen to it. Right. So instead of that, let's put a gliss. So this D is the, is is the key switch. So you're going to put the gliss between the note you're coming from and the note you're going to. In this circumstance, it's going to start the gliss here and end it there. So let's hear what that sounds like. Right. So a lot of kind of this, this is a lot of new uh, developing scripting here. So this is timed to stretch it to however long you play it. Um, so just to hear it again. Right. So it goes all the way to the end of his slide. And remember trombone, if you don't know, trombone can only gliss, uh, a tritone at the most. If they're all the way at first position and they go all the way out, they can go a tritone. Um, so you're never going to get like an octave gliss. It just doesn't, it's not a thing. But um, so you're going to get that starting gliss there, which is obviously a big part of the sound. Um, so yeah, or you could go up. Let's hear it up. What does it sound like? That? Right. Interesting. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, so so that's how the glisses are going to work. If you do a really long gliss uh, that's like longer than three or four beats, um, it'll play it a little differently because obviously it doesn't know where you're going to go. It only has four beats to figure it out and a little less technically. So um, the way the scripting works is if you play like a whole note gliss, it's going to just play a sustain and then fade into a gliss. So they don't always work exactly the same. And yeah, so that's the basics of the imminent trombone. Um, there's a few more detailed features that we'll go into more depth in some other videos. But um, yeah, thanks so much for watching. Uh -huh.